On April 8th, 2024, a total solar eclipse will be passing over North America, creating a path of totality. And in today's video, I wanna show you how to map out that path using felt and data from NASA. More specifically, I'm gonna be mapping out the 20 best places to view the eclipse according to astronomy.com. Okay, first things first, we wanna download the data set from NASA's website, and this is the page where we're gonna do it. I will link to this down in the video description. It's very, very interesting, all the information that they've put together here, so I highly suggest you read through this. But you can get the link to the actual data set right down here, so simply click on this and download it. Down here, I have short descriptions for each individual shapefile that's gonna be included in this data set. And for this particular visual, we're gonna be focusing on the duration, which is isocontours of maximum total duration at 30 second intervals. So essentially the best places to view the totality for the longest period of time. And it's gonna show us from basically durations of 30 seconds all the way up to four minutes. I have a new felt map here that I've created. If you don't have a felt account, just pause the video now, go set up a felt account. Now I'm gonna go grab the data set that we downloaded, and I'm just gonna go in here and essentially just grab the duration, and drag it and drop it over here. Again, this is a shape file, so make sure you grab all the duration files. We wanna bring it in as a data layer. Okay, the duration data layer has successfully uploaded, and here's what we've got here. It's looking pretty cool, but we definitely need to make some changes. So I'm gonna grab the duration layer, and I wanna open up the data table. So you can click on this little button right here, view data, and here's the data table. You can also use keyboard shortcut shift four to bring this up. Now this is really basic. We only have one column for duration. We have eight different rows showing the different durations in seconds. So I wanna style these categorically so that each row has its own color. This is really easy to do in the style editor. So under the general section, you have type. There's a drop down menu. Simply move this simply, switch it from simple to categories. Now we can see over here in our legend, we have our eight different categories that are all different colors. However, they're kind of out of order. So if you wanna customize these, you go to the showing section, go under all categories, and you can actually change the number of categories that you're showing if you want. Let's see how a ton of categories, you can do that. You can also get rid of specific categories if you'd like and change the colors manually here. All I wanna do is just reorder these by the duration, and I want them to go from the top to be the shortest duration, bottom the longest duration. And it looks like there's only three that are out of order. So to reorder these, you can just, as you can see as I hover my mouse over on the left here, I can grab these and move them around. Super duper cool. So I'm gonna grab these two and you see you have to actually grab them and grab the layer. Okay, there we go. That's looking good here, and you can see in our visual, that's that's what we want. However, I'm not a big fan of these colors, so I'm gonna go back here to the style editor, and under polygons, I'm gonna do the fill drop-down menu, and you see there's a bunch of preset palettes here. I'm definitely wanting to use something like this at the bottom. Okay, that's looking much better. However, I just wanna flip these colors, so there's actually a button down here for reverse colors. Okay. Great, that's what I want. Now I wanna view some actual cities, and I only wanna view these within the path. So how do we do this? Well, first we need to grab a data set. I've already pulled the populated places from Natural Earth, so if you wanna find these, just do a Google search for Natural Earth populated places. It'll take you right here. This is a great resource for very high quality data. Simply download it here, and then once you've got that downloaded, Come back over to felt and you can simply grab the zip file, the, the thing that downloaded and drag it and drop it into felt as a data layer, click create, felt upload anything is going to handle it perfectly. All right, so here we have our populated places. We only wanna see the populated places within our path of totality. So I'm gonna grab our new populated places layer and we wanna do a transformation right here. So click on the transform button and then under the drop down menu, we wanna select intersect. And it's gonna give us a preview right here. It shows you everything that it's gonna create in the new layer will be in this blue color. And so it says create new features from populated places where it overlaps with duration. We can apply to the entire layer or just features on screen because we don't need all the other populated places here. And we wanna rename the output layer. So we'll just call it populated places in the path. And now we'll click apply. Okay, I have my new populated places layer, so I'm gonna grab this original one and simply delete it. And I'll grab the new one, and I'll just grab the fill of these points, change them to black, and grab the stroke, maybe change this to a white color, and then bring the size down to one maybe. 
And don't worry too much about the look of this because I'm gonna be making all my final style tweaks at the very end. I find that is a good way to work because you're gonna to need to do that anyways. So we have some cities here in the path. It's looking good, but these aren't the main focus of the visual. The main focus of this visual are the top 20 places to view the eclipse, which I told you at the beginning, I found this from a website called astronomy.com. So if you just do a simple Google search for top places to view solar eclipse 2024, this should be the top post that pops up here. And this is, again, from astronomy.com. It's this list of these different cities, and they have it listed out with some you know, additional information right down here. Eclipse starts, eclipse ends. So there's a lot of cool information, but what I, a lot of ads, but what I want to do is essentially just make a spreadsheet. So I want to make a Google sheet that I can just connect to felt so that it will automatically geocode and import that in. It's a really cool way to work. So I'm going to show you a quick way to do this. Now I have a Google sheet set up here and what I could do is I could just come in here and manually copy paste. Uh, the city, you know, I'm going to want a column for city, I want a column for state, and I want a column for country. And you know, you can go as crazy as you want with this. You can do columns for all of this information if you want it to show up in pop-ups on your map. But I'm just going to stick, you know, keep it to the simple name of the cities. Now, you know, I, I could, again, I could manually uh, just copy and paste this to the spreadsheet, but that's kind of a ridiculous way to work. So go ahead, grab the whole website, copy it, Go over to ChatGPT, paste it in, hit enter, and then say, um, give me a spreadsheet style list with cities in the first column, states in the second column, and countries in the third column. And let's just see if ChatGPT can handle this first try. Okay, boom, that's looking great. Now you can just copy this right here. I think you can just copy it directly like this. Go over to Google Sheets and paste it. Or figure out how to like copy shift paste it there we go and then I'll just grab my first row here and do view freeze the first row maybe put it in bold there we go and then we have our headers so again whatever you put in here is going to show up as data attributes or data fields in felt so to share it well first I want to rename it uh, top 20 places to view the Eclipse click on the share button and then make sure you set to anyone with a link right here, general access, anyone with a link, and then copy the link, come back over to your felt map, and then click on this little button right here, upload from URL. And now when you paste this in, it'll check it, says it looks good, add to map, and now watch the magic happen. It's gonna upload this as a layer. Okay, so we have our new layer uploaded here. I'm gonna click and select show only this to make sure that everything is within the path here and nothing is basically too far off or didn't process correctly. Because what Felt is doing here is it geocoded this information. So if I hold Shift 4 and bring up the data table, you can see that it basically came in exactly as I had it arranged in the Google Sheet. So Felt looks at this information and will either geocode addresses or areas, or it can even geomatch regions, depending on a variety of different factors, however you enter this information in. If you want to check out the documentation, there is um, a lot of different information about how you can both geocode and geomatch tabular data like this, which is very, very powerful. So let me go ahead and show all again. And now I'll quickly style these. We'll bring the size of these to three, and I will create the same fill and stroke colors here. We'll do white with black. And for these, I actually wanna have labels. So under points, there is a section for labels. Just hit the plus icon to activate these. And now I'll quickly style these, bring them to like nine. And this is looking good. You can choose how you wanna name them. If you wanna label them by state, country, or city, I obviously wanna do it by city. Okay, so I'm pretty close. This is looking good, but I wanna make some small style tweaks now to really get it how I want it. For example, all of this is looking a bit cluttered now, all of these labels. So what I wanna do is I just wanna look at the labels for the cities. This is the main part of this visual are the names of these cities. So I wanna get rid of all these other labels. That's pretty easy to do. You just come over here to the background section and in the overflow menu right here, you can turn off show labels and that's gonna only leave the labels that I manually turned on for these data layers. Now speaking of these data layers, I wanna rename these. So we'll just quickly come in here and say top 20 places to view the eclipse. And naturally, I wanna cite this source as well. So I'm gonna copy the astronomy link 
so that everybody knows this is where I got the data. Now there's two different ways you can do this. There's a caption section right down here in the legend, or you can go to data and then edit metadata, and then right down here it says source. So you can do the source information right here. So I can paste the source right here and do astronomy magazine. And I'll go ahead and add the caption as well. I can just say from astronomy.com or something. And for populated places, we'll just say from natural earth. And duration from NASA. And now let's say I want these colors to really stand out a little bit more. So what I can do is change the background from this default and set it to like light or dark mode. So there's light mode, or I can swap it over to dark mode. Okay, I like dark mode, that's looking pretty good. There's one last little tweak I'd like to do, and I can take the position of the duration layer and place it below water and roads. You can see that crops it to the land, but also what that does is it places it underneath the borders of the states. So this is really cool if you wanna add that additional context and really see where it intersects with these states. This is very easy to do. And you'll notice that even as I zoom in a little bit further, when the roads become visible, they as well are on top of this layer. So this is really great if you wanna see where the roads are intersecting with the different durations. Great way to add this additional context. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe and activate notifications. See you in the next one.